they're paying us on average about a hundred bucks a month, a little bit over that. And so we're making half a million in annual revenue. Hey everyone. Today I have an interview uh, for you guys with a couple who built their startup while traveling. Uh, we talked about how they started their company, uh, the strategies they used to stay productive while traveling, and the tech stack that they used to uh, build their system, among other things. Uh, I personally learned a lot from this interview, so hopefully you will too. So our startup's called Canny, and that's, uh, the website's canny.io, and uh, it's a user feedback tool. And so we help other software companies keep track of feature requests and bug reports from their users so that they can build a better product. Yeah. Right. So actually, I had seen Canny before. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> That's uh, awesome. Yeah, so what I saw was it's like a list of feature requests mm -hmm. where people can like upvote and maybe downvote too, right? No downvote. No downvote. Just upvote. We try to keep it right. positive. And how long have we been running the company? Um, I think I left my full-time job about three and a half years ago. <laughs> so but I guess we then. launched Canny almost two and a half years ago now. Yeah. Okay. So that was your job at... Facebook, right? Yep, I was working on the React team at Facebook. Nice. Software <laughs> engineer? Yep. And you were a designer at Facebook, right? I was a designer. I worked on uh, Messenger. Messenger. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so you left three and a half years ago. Did you leave at the same time? No. Funny enough, I started and Andrew left. <laughs> Pretty much uh, okay. right exactly when I started, Andrew left. Um, oh. Yeah, so I kind of stayed there for my year and a half while Andrew kind of worked on an earlier version of Canning, I guess. Yep. Um, right. And then eventually I left to join him, yeah. I like I to say I recruited Sarah. No. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, did, you, did you leave Facebook to work on this startup? Yep. It was a different flavor of the startup. And so back then it was called Product Pains and it was a community where people can post and vote on feature requests for any product publicly. And so we had a couple companies using it, and um, eventually the companies wanted more and more features, and we, we kind of turned it into a SaaS tool and rebranded as Canny. And so, yeah, it was similar, definitely. Right. Yeah, I mean, eventually we found that we needed to make money <laughs> off our business. Yeah. Um, and the earlier product pains, the earlier version was very consumer focused, um, and so there was not really a business model behind it. Um, and so we basically flipped it into a SaaS tool, and so we charge businesses to pay to use the platform. Yeah. And how were you like? How could you be so confident that <laughs> you know you left your job at Facebook? It just felt too comfortable. It felt like um, you know I wanted to get into startups, and it felt like the things that I was learning at a big company weren't really relevant to startups, like sales and marketing and recruiting and all that. And so yeah, I felt like I had to had to you know, take a risk and go do it. You know, I had an idea that I was excited about and um, yeah, it's turned out great. Wow. <laughs> I mean, I think when you go into startups, there's, there's no guarantee. Um, and this is our first venture together. Um, and so there was definitely like this feeling of you don't know what's going to happen. You don't know if you're going to be successful. Um, and it definitely felt that way for a long time with product pains. We just didn't really know where it was going for a long time. Um, and then we made our first dollar our first twenty dollars, and then we were like, "Okay, there's something going on here," um, which brings us to here today. <laughs> right. How long did it take you to, you know, make those first twenty dollars? Yeah. I think it was like a year and a half since I quit my <laughs> job. Yeah, but we weren't really focused on, you know, we were building a community. Like there wasn't even a way for people to pay us, and so we were just focused on growing this community mm -hmm. with users giving feedback to companies. And then companies started asking for the features and we said, hey, would you pay for those? And then they said, yeah, and um, kind of happened naturally that we turned it into a money making business. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Which is great because we're bootstrapped and so we wouldn't be able to really continue doing this the way we want it to without being able to charge customers right. and make money off our work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's really cool. Uh, so it's been two and a half years since since the launch. Since the launch. Yeah. yeah. And like after that, like after all that, could you tell us about how the company is doing, you know, in terms of maybe the number of employees, revenue numbers, mm -hmm. if you don't mind sharing? Sure. Yeah. Um, so we have 450 customers and those are paying customers and uh, they're paying us on average about a hundred bucks a month, a little bit over that. And so we're making half a million in annual revenue. Wow. Um, which feels great for a bootstrap company, you know, no outside funding. Half a million is enough where we can support like our business and a team. We've hired uh, three other people 
and they're all remote. And so our, our team is in UK, Estonia, and Seattle, and then we're here in Toronto. And um, yeah, we're, we're really excited about where we are. Uh, yeah, so yeah. I went to the University of Waterloo and I studied uh, software engineering. And I, uh, I studied in a design program. Um, it was a joint program between York University and Sheridan College. Um, yeah, it was like a regular four-year program, but very, very much graphic design focused um, and less like digital tech focused. Um, but yeah, I eventually found my way to doing kind of more product design, UI design stuff. Right. How, <laughs> how did you get into tech? Yeah, um, tons of my friends went to Waterloo, honestly, for, uh, for engineering. And um, I eventually participated in a bunch of hackathons. Um, which really opened my eyes to tech and San Francisco in general. Um, and I just really gravitated towards that and less of what I was studying at school, which was a lot of like uh, editorial design, packaging, stuff like that. Um, that's more traditional. Um, so I really, really enjoyed the, the, the web aspect. And so I just pretty much focused on that and did a bunch of internships. And then eventually, um, yeah, I found myself at Facebook. <laughs> Did you learn to do web stuff, like digital stuff on your own then? Yeah, um, school, the school curriculum was behind in those aspects. Um, so we did have to um, take that onto ourselves. Um, just having a website is kind of a must. So um, in third year, I think, I just kind of said, screw it. Like, I'm not really learning how to build a website. I'm just going to go do this on my own during some summer. And so I just built my own website. And that's kind of how I picked up my front-end skills, yeah. <laughs> nice. Uh, so after graduating from like those programs, you both decided to work at Facebook, right? <laughs> I, did a, I tried to do a startup for six months, and uh, it didn't go super well. My co-founder felt some pressure to go get a job, and um, so it was kind of just me working full-time, and I had like the Facebook offer there as a backup mm -hmm. option, and I ended up taking it at one point, yeah. I think it was a good move for both of us just to get some like foundation and like early job skills, but there's nothing really that like sets you up for entrepreneurship other than doing it. So yeah, I'm glad we both got that taste, but now we're like here doing our thing. Yeah, <laughs> right. I think it was super worthwhile. Like there's the, the experience you get of, you know, being able to put together a project on your own, which you might not get until you have some professional experience. and then. Also financially, like we probably couldn't have worked on yeah. it without, you know, funding if we didn't have a little bit of a financial cushion from working at a big company. Yeah, that's really true. Right. So working at Facebook was like very different from what you do now, right? <laughs> 100% different. Yeah, very, very different. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't say I didn't like it. Like I really do. Like I really, d I thought I did good work there and I really enjoyed the people that I worked with. But it wasn't, like, I knew from the beginning that I wanted to do my own company someday. And so I made the jump eventually. And yeah, it's, it's totally different. <laughs> Same thing for you? Yeah, I mean, I think at a big company, like, you're focused on this tiny, tiny thing. It's part of a huge, huge picture. Mm -hmm. And, like, for me, I didn't really even know how my job correlated to growing Facebook's business. I just was tasked to, like, make React Native, which was a part of React, a great project used by a lot of companies. And... Um, yeah, whereas at Canny, like, it's hard to do anything without thinking about the ROI and, like, how is this going to grow our business? Mm -hmm. um, and if it's not worthwhile, then we don't do it. Yeah, you and feel just, your impact a lot more directly. Yeah. yeah, and the breadth. Like, you know, here we're doing sales, we're doing marketing, we're doing recruiting, we're doing all this stuff that, you know, was totally abstracted away from your job as an engineer at Facebook. Which is cool. It's fun to learn about. <laughs> right. A lot of new things to learn then. Yeah, yeah definitely. So let's, uh, let's talk about, you know, how you've been traveling while yeah. building the company. <laughs> uh, when did you decide to move out of San Francisco and why did you decide to move out of it? Yeah, I mean, San Francisco is a great place to live if you're working at a big company or if you're trying to raise money. <clears throat> but after we were, after we left our big company and weren't trying to raise money, it didn't feel like a great fit for us anymore. It was, um, it's really expensive, really, really expensive city. And we had always kind of wanted to travel and, you know, we didn't have an office, we didn't have employees, we didn't have investors, there's no reason really keeping us there. And so we thought, why not go be digital nomads for a little bit? And um, we booked a ticket to London was our first destination just to kind of warm up with traveling. And uh, yeah, we, we ended up traveling for about two years after that. Wow. 
Yeah, we're actually just now kind of slowing down a little bit, um, and we decided to stay in Toronto. So that's pretty exciting. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Um, so were you like tired of traveling? Sarah wanted to keep going, and I was I was sick of it. I was so done with it. Oh yeah. Um, I think the biggest thing is loneliness, is because we would stay in the city for about a month and then move around. And uh, you don't make a lot of friends that way just because, you know, even if you do meet people, then you like leave immediately after. And it's hard to find people who are going to like travel to from city to city with you. And um, yeah, I just miss like being around friends. And so that was the big motivator for me was just being coming back and being around friends and having that com camaraderie that you have, you know, hanging out with people that you know and like. And yeah. It's not for everyone. <laughs> that's for sure. Um, I would continue doing it. But honestly, you like Andrew has made a big compromise for the last two years. So thanks. <laughs> uh, so when you're traveling, would you like book an Airbnb for a month, something like that? Yeah. And book flights. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we wouldn't like it's it's a trade off. If you if you book it farther in advance, you get cheaper and better places, but you get less flexibility. If you book it like last minute, you get worse places for more money, but you get a lot of flexibility. And so. We would some end up somewhere in the middle where maybe we'd book it like a month in advance or we'd book like a couple of our next stops. Um, we'd never try to be like crazy planners, but we wouldn't save it for the very last second so that we could still get a nice place. Yeah. And um, yeah, we would try to stay in Airbnbs for a month. And you know, usually if you stay for a month, there's a discount. It can be as much as like 30, 40% off. And so you can get some great deals. It makes it like very livable. Um, it was definitely way cheaper than living in like San Francisco. Like I think our average rent split between the two of us was maybe like seven hundred dollars a month for the two years. Wow, which is pretty affordable compared to most cities. Yeah, yeah, especially Even like Southeast Asia. Right, <laughs> right. When you make it over there, it's just like meals are a dollar. Like it's crazy. It's so cheap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That so we great. actually travel the world and save money. Wow. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people ask, "How do you how do you afford to travel so much?" And right. I was like. We're saving it's money. Cheaper. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I should do it too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think if you have the flexibility, like I would recommend anybody to like try it. Um, and honestly, if you don't like it, you just come back. It's not a big deal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And what was it like to, you know, try to build a company while mm -hmm. traveling? It was challenging. I mean, we weren't just like traveling, right? Like we were working full time. And so every day it's like, okay, where's the cafe? We got to find a cafe with Wi-Fi and bathrooms and food and outlets and all that. And that can be a struggle. You know, you get to a new place, you get to like, you know, we were in like Ho Chi Minh City and we're like, okay, where's the cafe today? And it's just like, they, they have them. They've got like great tea shops and whatnot. And, but like, it, that was the ongoing struggle was like finding a good place to work. Um, but we did. And a lot of times we worked from home and um, yeah. I don't know. I think it, I think it went well. And what's it been like? Well, like, what was it like to, you know, work with people remotely? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we kind of figured it out as we go, as we went, as we do everything. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I don't know. Like, we we had to think about like, especially for something like customer success or marketing, it's something that we haven't actually worked in a job like this before. And so we just think about like, what do we do on a daily basis? You know, we're like, this is how we talk to customers. This is how we do support. Um, and then. Yeah, we, we help them get onboarded to what we're doing. And I would say it was, it's been a learning process. It still is a learning process. Like the next time we hire somebody, we're going to have to sit down and think about it really hard about like, okay, what is this person going to be doing and how are we going to get make them successful? Um, but yeah, overall, you know, lots of communication early on and then um, until people are onboarded. And then, yeah, we have two weekly meetings. We have a meeting on Monday and Friday where everybody attends. And Monday is like, how's your weekend? What are you working on this week? And then Friday is like, what did you work on this week? What are you doing this weekend? <laughs> um, and so it's pretty casual. You know, we don't like a lot of meetings, but I think FaceTime is important. Just keeping in touch with people while you're remote is, uh, is really important. And so, yeah. And as a remote team, like we don't see each other that often. So what we're planning on doing is uh, team offsite or retreat or however you like to call it um, where we bring everyone together in some city around the world um, usually for around a week so we've done two of these so we did our first one in Lisbon and our second one in Split in Croatia and then our third one is in Denver in September so um, just I think it's a great way for your team to get some like real personal like hangout time because you just it's not the same when you work with someone and you only see them via video chat um, it's a totally different vibe and we think it's really important for our team to just connect like on mm. a personal level yeah they yeah. have been really fun all sides <laughs> have been a blast yeah, yeah. <laughs>
Yeah, it sounds fun. Yeah. <laughs> uh, do you think it would have been easier if it wasn't a remote team? Like, there's definitely something nice to like be in the same office as your coworkers, work with your coworkers, see them every day. But I just think it's like, I don't know, it feels like remote is kind of the future. It feels like that's where things are headed. And um, especially for us, when we were digital, digital nomads, it, it seemed like that was the only company that we could build. Like, we're not going to build like a digital nomad troop of people like traveling together. Um, and so, yeah, I just felt like the company that we had to build and the company that we wanted to build. And so that's what we did. Yeah, and I think a lot of people today are looking for remote work and we just have like way more access, I think, to talent across the world, mm -hmm. which is, I think, a big deal for us when, you know, like competition for talent is so high. Um, but yeah, I think just the flexibility of it personally, like I enjoy work from home when I feel like it. I enjoy going to a cafe when I feel like it. I don't, I enjoy not having to go into an office. Um, so yeah, I think it's like, I think remote is great <laughs> yeah it sounds like you you really enjoy this yeah lifestyle. yeah and I think everyone on the team does too like uh, people have families and they like to spend time with their families people um, like we wouldn't be able to work together because we're in totally different places so this team is because we're remote I think now before we go to the next section about their productivity and their tech stack uh, I want to quickly mention this video sponsor Skillshare uh, Skillshare is an online learning community for creators with more than 25,000 classes in coding, design, business, and more. Uh, for example, you might want to check out one of their web development courses, uh, the JavaScript Toolkit, Write Cleaner, Faster, and Better Code. Uh, just looking through this course quickly, I can see that the production quality is really good, and this is definitely something I would personally check out if I was trying to improve my JavaScript skills right now. Now you can check out Skillshare for free for two months with my referral link in the description below. And after that, it only costs around $10 a month if you decide to continue using them. All right, now back to the video. <laughs> uh, how did you stay productive when you didn't have an office? Yeah, I mean, we, 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 never, had, we never had an office. So we always had to figure out what productivity means to us and I think that's really different for everyone like even between me and Andrew like we have different work styles um, like for me I really like to go to cafes I just feel really really productive when I go to a cafe I don't know you might feel a little different I feel similarly yeah yeah um, or like some days you want to work at home just, right just it depends on your day-to-day -day and that and like again remote work just allows us to decide when we wake up in the morning <laughs> what we feel like um, so yeah it's just like, what do you feel like today? What do you need to be productive? Do you need um, like coffee? Do you need like outlets? And hmm. just make sure you have those. And I think you're in productive. You're in a productive zone. <laughs> yeah. One thing that that we learned from Facebook was like you don't measure someone's productivity based on hours worked. It's not like you know they need to show up at a certain time and leave at a certain time. Um, and so for us, we don't really measure our own productivity based on how many hours we're working or based on you know like nine to five kind of thing. Like what's important to us is our output and that our company's growing and doing well. And I think especially as founders, we feel like pressure, like you were asking, like, how do you stay productive, right? Like we feel pressure, like, you know, at first it was like, if we don't, um, you know, work, then our company fails. And now it's like, if we don't work, not only does our company fail, but then our team gets disappointed in us. And so there's just like so much pressure to just like keep going and moving forward that I couldn't imagine like, you know, not being productive. But also, yeah, I think, I think it's important to separate like home mode versus work mode, especially if you work from home. You know, like you, you can't just like roll out of bed in your pajamas and work because then you're feeling like super lazy, you know? You have to like <laughs> shower and get dressed and like be in work mode when you go to work, if you're gonna, even if you work from home. Um, and so yeah, I, I really think just having that mindset of like going to work, even if you're working from home is important. All right, and are there any like particular tools that you recommend for staying productive? It's an interesting one. I mean, I literally, my task list is like in a code editor, you know, it's an atom and I just have like a bunch of boxes and I change them to check marks when I'm done. But, um, I mean, there's one tool that I use called Cubeserve and it, um, it kind of just tracks what you do in your computer and so it can help you know, like, this is how much time you're spending on productive things, like, you know, your code editor and this is how much time you're spending on unproductive things like Netflix and Hacker News and whatever. And so for me, I feel motivated because there's a little percentage counter like in the dock of my <laughs> Mac that says like you're like 81% productive today. You've worked like four hours and 30 minutes of productive time and I want to like drive that up like every day. I want to be like as productive as possible. That's a good so one. I like that one. It's kind of like a little bit of a mental hack. 
and uh, yeah. I don't know, on the other side of things, like I also feel like it's important to not get kind of too sucked into your screen and stare at it all the time. So I have this app called Healthier um, that I've set to make me leave the computer every hour for one to two minutes. Um, it just helps me kind of make sure I'm just not kind of deteriorating in my seat. Um, so yeah, that's, I don't know if it helps with productivity, but I think it's, it's good for just health in general. <laughs> right. Um, okay, going to a different topic. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the tech stack that you use for Canny? Yeah, it's all JavaScript, and so we've got uh, you know React on the front end, of course, because I used to work on that, and then Node on the back end. For our database, we use MongoDB, and it's all hosted on AWS. How did you decide to use those? Um, I mean, really, it's kind of like how any startup I think should be formed, is my opinion. Is like um, it's what you know, what and what I knew. You know, I was working on the React team. I knew JavaScript really well, and it kind of makes sense for you to use JavaScript on the front end. You know JavaScript really well. Like, why not use it on the back end? Um, for a database, like MongoDB is pretty controversial these days, but it's like what I knew and what was really easy to get started and it's worked great for us so far. Um, AWS, same thing, it's like it's what I knew. All this stuff is just like what I knew and so that's what we started with. Right. It's worked out. I think it's a pretty common common stack to have, right? Yeah, it's not too crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Not crazy at all. <laughs> uh, did you have any like difficulties any at any point like building uh, you know, this product on mm -hmm. your own? Like as opposed to working at Facebook? Yeah, I mean I had never built a product, like I had built side projects but nothing like to this scale and so it's definitely been a learning process, you know, and now that we have like customers there's like security and stuff involved and you know we've been learning a lot about, um, you know, scaling our app up. But I remember like there are some, some significant difficulties when we went from like client side rendering to server side rendering or like, um, when we went from one server to having multiple servers <laughs> and just like these kind of like zero to one steps were, were difficult, but you know, we're so much more um, just well put together now that we've got all that stuff, but there's a lot ahead of us. Right. So that was, that was like a lot of learning involved too. Yeah. Yeah. And especially like we, we did server side rendering before Next.js existed. And so we kind of had to just like plug a bunch of stuff together because that's how people used to do it. And now that we've got a bunch of stuff plugged together, it doesn't really make sense to like tear it all apart to move to Next.js, and so that's an interesting place that we're in. <laughs> right. Yeah. And are there any like particular resources for learning JavaScript, React, Node, mm -hmm. like those uh, tools? Yeah, that's kind of a tough one because um, I learned it kind of a long time ago. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, so like I learned React from joining the React team and learning it from literally the people that like yeah. invented it and popularized it. And so, you know, that's one way. Go join the React team at Facebook. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, I think, like, one cool website that I'm really excited about these days is Repl.it, where you can just spin up, like, a coding environment for any programming language, JavaScript, Node, um, you know, PHP, anything, and just start coding, and then you get, like, the, the output right there. And they support React, and you can build, like, websites there. And so I think that's really cool and for just, like, hacking around. You don't have to worry about, like, setting up your developer environment. I don't know if you can really like learn JavaScript, but you can definitely play around there. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, just like try to build something, see what walls you run into, and um, yeah, Google it. You know, try to solve your own problems. <laughs> is I think a lot of how I learned. I totally agree. Like that's the best way is just like dive in and you know pick a project and try to do it. And when you get stuck, just like Stack Overflow. Yeah. Like that's the best resource for me, honestly. When I was learning front end stuff, it was it was great and. Yeah, whenever somebody asks like about for a book or something, I have no idea. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. How, <laughs> how did you learn front end stuff? Yeah, I mean, literally, like, I was like, I'm going to build my portfolio website. Um, the first one was like just vanilla HTML, CSS, but the second one, I for some reason d decided to use WordPress, um, which a lot of people were using at that point, but I just thought I would extra challenge myself. Um, and so, I don't know. Yeah, it was literally just when I got stuck. I just literally Google the problem that I had and it was usually like the first Stack Overflow link and I just click it and I implement it and it works. <laughs> yeah. wow. And then from then on, I remember how to do it, right? So, or I can just Google it again. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's really as simple as that, I think. Right. I guess that works. <laughs> yeah, I mean, especially for front end where it's like, um, you don't, yeah, you don't need to have all that like mathematical background and all this logic stuff. Like, yeah, I think it's pretty straightforward. <laughs> 
All right. Uh, so just one last question. Yeah. Uh, is there anything you want to add to this conversation? Ooh. I would say build side projects. I would say like even if you know you're you're at a full time job now, um, start hacking on things like like especially if you can find someone that you work really well with. I think that's like one of the big things for us was having someone else to bounce ideas off of or like just gut check on certain things. Um, just go and build stuff, honestly. Like there's, you have free time, <laughs> like do it. Um, and you get a good taste of what it's like to, um, yeah, just get started in the startup world. Yeah, I think a big one for us was we made our first dollar before we launched. And so then by the time we launched, we knew that we could make money. And so I would encourage people who want to start a software business to try to make their first dollar as fast as possible. And then like, they can do that by solving a problem. You can only make money when you're solving a problem for somebody. And so yeah, solve a problem for somebody, charge them for it, and then launch, and it'll be a pretty good start. <laughs> Not saying that's the formula for like a billion dollar company, but if you're trying to get like a small software business off the ground, I think that's, that's the way to do it. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Great. Uh, thank you so much. Cool. Thank you. Thanks it was so much fun. for having us. <laughs>